Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crude, crowd-funded space rocket speaker. Today is February 23rd and it is time for some rocket updates. Let's do some catching up here, but before we go into the propellant tanks, a couple of things first. Cameron and Matthias here came for a tour of our workshop last weekend and decided to come back with two pairs of helping hands this week as well. Our head of IT Ignacio joined their forces as well as they started working on a cage for one cubic meter water container, which will be used to collect water during our BPM 100 engine injector water flow tests to verify the injector's mass flow. They did a great job in the time they had and we appreciate their support. Also, Thomas and Niels used our small water flow test hand to do a bit more data logging on some off-the-shelf oil burner nozzles for our liquid nitrogen burner for Spica's pressurization system. I didn't get a chance to film much of it, however, at this time they didn't use water but rather something you shouldn't be drinking before driving. After this quick public safety announcement, we can take a look at what Jakob has to say about welding Spica's propellant tanks. It's a cold Sunday evening, um, but we got another very important milestone chipped off today. Now, we've been practicing welding for, uh, for months now, trying to adjust the parameters back and forth to get these weldings we need to do uh, in a very high quality to get them absolutely perfect. Uh, several things have come out of this, but the most important one is that uh, I'm standing right next to the first um, section, cylindrical section of one of the speaker propeller tanks. Uh, we've got the welding done now, the long seam welding, which is going to be the most strained welding of the entire tank. That one looks really good by now, and our semi-automatic long seam welder seems to be doing its work just perfectly. That's the one part, and then we've also been trying different methods of welding, and that also resulted in just yesterday, uh, we had made a number of, um, of test uh, pieces that were put in a big hydraulic uh, machine, especially for measuring out uh, tensile strength and, and yield strength of, of some of these materials. So it was, they were basically tested to destructions and I mean, they look like dog bones and supposedly they snap on the middle where they're weakest or where the welding is weakest. And what came out of that was that we found a, uh, one of our welding uh, schemes which turned out to be, actually the welding turned out to be stronger than the base material. And it's obvious that, the, uh, that these three samples have, uh, have snapped uh, a considerable distance away from the welding which actually joined the two pieces. Um, we also have a, a preliminary uh, plot of the, uh, of the results uh, and apart from one strange outlier um, it seems that uh, the, the difference of, of, of height of the, on the top of, this, of, of these plots um, they all have pretty good uh, tensile strength and apparently the ones with the uh, preferred welding method they seem to actually be stronger than the base material. It's, it's not correct but at least it looks like that in the results. So we can do long seam welds now which are at least as strong as the base material. So, after months of practicing your welding techniques, you are now ready to take 10 simple steps in welding your crude suborbital reusable rocket propellant tanks. Number 1. You need to have some sort of shelter from the outside elements to make nice and strong welds. If you don't want to spend too much money on it, something as simple as an onion tent or high vertical or horizontal bay can work just fine. Number 2. You need to be subscribed and wearing necessary safety equipment. Number 3. Make sure your welding surfaces are clean and even. Number four, you must have an adjustment or persuasion hammer. It is the tool that allows you to get precision alignment and required tolerances. Once that is done, you can move to step number five, securing your working surfaces by tightening down the clamps. Followed by number six, where you make sure your welding surface is clean and spotless. At number seven, you attach your welding rail onto the brake and start its alignment as number eight. Then we are down to our two final steps that begin the welding process. Number 9 is where you start placing tack welds at regular intervals along your seam so that your working area doesn't start warping when you get to step number 10, which is starting your final long seam weld. Once it gets going, it is a good time to grab a coffee, read a book, or pay close attention to what your automated machine is doing.
once the welding process is finished, you must take a close look and admire the nice job that you and your team has done. Congratulations! That is all for now, so as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit all-volunteer project. The reason we are getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, you can help us out by going over to our website, www.compsub.com, and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return, you get all these insider videos on building a space program which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.